Hey, candy lickers, want in on a future episode of Casio's Cut? There's only two ways you can do it. One, be famous and highly entertaining. But then you probably wouldn't want to be part of a lowbrow podcast like this, would you? Or two, stuff Casio's box. Sound appealing? I thought it might. It's real easy. Mail anything, and I do mean anything, to Casio's Cut, P.O. Box 19065, Huntsville, Alabama, 35804. Homemade creations, love letters, clothing, or food. Yeah, Castillo really likes that. Human skin, a picture of your house. We don't care. Send it all. Stuff your package in Castillo's box today. Castillo's Cut, P.O. Box 19065, Huntsville, Alabama, 35804. What's up, Candy Lickers? Pleased to meet you. Nice to know me. What you doing? You're listening to another edition of Cassio's Cut. Hi, Mero's Cassio, of course. And I am joined on a special guest uh, this time, Mr. George Pentagast, drummer for Dishwalla. What's up, George? How you doing? We're doing excellent, man. Uh, we have a lot to cover with you. Uh, <laughs> one, Dishwalla. Got some new music out. So we're going to yeah. get to that. Uh, but we, I want to go back. Uh, I think, of course... Uh, if anybody knows rock music, they got to know the name Dishwalla. Um, I can't believe this because we got a lot to cover, but next year will be 30 years as the band Dishwalla, which is absolutely incredible run. Um, I'm sure at some point you thought that was not going to be a case when you first started. I don't, I don't know if everybody gets into it going, man, we're going to be rocking 30 years from now, but what did you guys expect? How mind-blowing has it been? Um, you know, it's, it's a little bit of both. It's a little bit of, um, you kind of, uh, when you're, when you're really young and you're in a band, you think, yeah, we're going to be together forever. We're going to be the next fill in the blank of the band that's been together forever. And, uh, and then, um, and then, uh, you know, the things happen that happen with bands and then you find yourself here and you go, whoa, it's 30 years later, you know, <laughs> um, but it's interesting because, you know, I would say maybe 10 years ago, um, the shows were weird because it, 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 uh, we had all aged, myself included, you know. And so the crowd looked different. The, the curtain opened. And it was like, oh, huh, this is interesting. Who are these people? You know, <laughs> and, and, and now it's, uh, it's kind of cycled through again. And, uh, and we have... Um, you know, may, maybe thanks to algorithms, or I, I'm not sure what, but uh, there's a there's a new generation of listeners, and and that's you know that's been kind of cool. Well, we were the same listeners at the early concerts. We've just lost our hair, as you can see. So <laughs> yeah. It just it went down here to the beard, and now we're we're still rocking with you guys. Uh, <laughs> if somebody's watching for some reason, they don't know Dishwalla. I, well, I think they know the name. I don't know if they could put it together. Counting Blue Cars, an absolute smash. Uh, it's one of those songs that was, I feel like, on every 90s and 2000s television show ever. Um, <laughs> Counting Blue Cards, absolutely amazing. Millions of streams. Um, but we talked about 30 years as a band, and you talked about, hey, things happen with a band. I want to delve into that just a little bit because you had to leave in 98, um, mm -hmm. and that is due – did the leaving was the leaving because of the injury or was that was that just coincidental like timing with it wise with it well it was really um i kept winning all of the arm wrestling matches <laughs> and, um no i'm kidding no i i had it i had a, <laughs> I, had, I had an injury um that really nobody could figure out and uh and um so you know there was there was both the um there were parts of the time i i really couldn't play 
And then there were parts of the time that, uh, that I was, you know, trying to figure out how to transition into the, the new way of playing, but while the wheels are already in motion, yeah. and that's a tough thing to do, you know? Yeah. Um, and they had a very, you know, uh, you know, uh, Pete was a, a great, uh, he was my pinch hitter. And then he, he played for uh, a couple of years after me and uh, a couple of albums. And, um, but yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, I kind of had to take the time off, you know. Um, at the time, are you, I mean, you know, as much as you want to tell us at the time, is it, is it a devastating thing? Or are you thinking, or I don't know what your mindset, are you optimist guy? Are you, Hey, we had a good run. And, you know, I got to play music for a few years or, or was this a, my gosh, we've had the success We're two or three albums in now. And, and now I can't even do what I love to do anymore. Yeah. I would say a little bit of both, a little yeah. bit of both. You know, I had a soft landing pad where um, I had some really good friends that we had all had uh, record deals that, <clears throat> you know, let's face it at the, at the time I left in 98, that that was kind of the end of major label, you know, Dishwalla anyway, right? And then it kind of sunk into the going back to being an indie thing. Um, and so these, uh, I, I moved to LA uh, because all these other people were still, I was still working with these other people in session work and all this other stuff. And, uh, and we started this, this band just for fun. And so I kind of had this, this place to land where they weren't, so aware of uh, uh, how I had to change how I was, I was playing. They just thought that's how I played. And so, and so <laughs> I could see both sides. Like I could see like, I played with you forever and you're doing weird things now in order to play. And then I can see the new band being like, I, I don't know, I, I was watching you do weird things. You know, and why would I, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, so, so yeah, no, I, I, had a, I had a soft landing pad and it was, you know, it, it was, it was just weird. It was, you know, because that's your whole life, you know, uh, but devastating. I don't know. You gotta, you gotta, you know, d dust off and get back on. Yeah. So you, you, 98 is when you leave. Uh, they mm -hmm. continue, like you said, kind of in the indie, indie label, uh, there after that, they're still, still going on, but then the full band takes the hiatus in 06. Um, but you regroup in 08 and you're back now. Right. Uh, but this time we've got Justin Fox replacing JR, which mm -hmm. you and JR started the band, right? Right. Uh, so this is, but Ju you guys knew Justin from the business, right? Yes. Uh, so he comes in as a uh, new singer. Was, was it just the right time for you to come back? What, I mean, what made you decide, Hey, if we're going to do this back in 08, what was the key for you going, I'm coming back to well, somehow our our uh, agent from the '90s uh, got in touch with me, and and I don't know why he thought <clears throat> I would be the person to do it, but he he got in touch with me and said, "Hey, um, we've got this show Rock Fest in Wisconsin, and uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's it's actually a really it's a big show, <laughs> yeah." And so he said, "We're they're doing this '90s day Matchbox Twenty Wallflowers." Um, do you think you could talk to everybody and see if they, you know, if they would get back together? Because at that point, you know, the bass player's not playing with them anymore. I'm not playing with them anymore. Um, and so I thought, okay, I'll call, um, I'll call JR first because he's, that's the, the biggest hurdle. And I haven't talked to him in, you know, almost 10 years. And so uh, I called him and he said, yeah, for sure. I want to do it. Absolutely. And so that was my, I could go to, to the next guy and the next guy and say, JR said he would, Rodney said he would, right. Scott's, you know what I mean? And so, like mom said I could, well, dad said yeah. I could do you. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then um, after we had signed the contracts and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we were set to go, you know, rehearse and get ready for the show, uh, uh, JR was putting out his, his solo record and he was advised that, uh, it would be best that he not go out and do a, a Dishwalla show while he was doing that. Wow. Even a one-off. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, so uh, that's when we kind of went in, into emergency mode and our agent said, 
uh, go do the show. And if I hear anything about it, we'll never work together again. <laughs> Have fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no pressure. None. None whatsoever. whatsoever. <laughs> so, you know, we're, we're thinking of all these people that could come in and, uh, and sing for that, for that show. Uh, friends from other bands and, you know, all this other stuff. And then uh, Jim, uh, who, you know, is in the band, uh, he had worked with, with Justin in the, in the studio and he's like, man, this kid's got pipes. He can sing, you know? And uh, so we rehearsed with him. He knew the material, um, you know, from growing up with it, uh, being a Santa Barbara kid and being a vocalist, he was, you know, a big Dishwalla fan. And so um, it was kind of an easy transition. And, uh, and um, you know, you're, you're in the rehearsal room and, and there's the white noise and there's the, the sweat and the, you know, whatever. And I'm like, I, I think it sounds good. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and, then, uh, and then we get to, to, uh, to Rockfest and this kid walks out on stage and uh, puts his arms out you know, and says whatever singers say, you know, hey, Wisconsin, you know, whatever. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> right? And everybody just loses their mind, right? And uh, and then from that moment on, he had the crowd in the palm of his hand and he, and he worked that thing like he'd been playing to 10, 20,000 people his whole life. And, and, uh, and it's kind of been that way ever since, you know. So was that moment, did you think, hey, let's start a new run or was that still... Hey, we're doing a show and we're kind of let's see what happens from here. Or did you think, man, I kind of got the bug again? This is this is gonna be fun. Well, okay, so I think it was okay. So the pause was uh you know, for all kinds of reasons. And then the getting back together was for the show. And then there was this, okay, uh, are we gonna just do shows every once in a while when somebody calls and says we're doing 90s day at the county fair? <laughs> right. Uh, you know. Um, and then there was kind of a reluctance to be, even though we're super grateful and appreciative of, of having County Blue Cars, um, at a certain point, you don't want to just go out and be, we're the County Blue Cars band and right. have that be why people come see you or whatever. Um, so that, that was kind of our, I would say, we would kind of go like this, kind of depending on what the, what the offers were, if there was a cool show, mostly it was like, if the, um, if the, the area was cool and had cool food or a nice resort <laughs> or if the, um, or if the bands on the bill, like quite honestly, like who the other bands were either um, just because it would be fun to play with them or we, we had played with them in the past or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but then in uh, 2017, we were like, you know, we, we want to be, uh, we want to be relevant. We want to have new material and, and stuff that, that uh, fans are, uh, are excited about new stuff and we, and we get new fans from it, you know? And, uh, so that's when we went to, uh, went out to Joshua tree and, and recorded Juniper road. How, and then, how, tours oh, happened. oh yeah. Oh, and then we just had tours after. And then that's when things got back to let's just go out and do tours and shows and, you know, put out material. Well, how, how was it that transition? Because one, it was you know, what, 12 years between uh, a Dishwalla record and Juniper Road. Uh, but, you know, before that, you, you know, Pet Your Friends is coming out mid-90s. Talk about now in 2017 as a musician being through that 90s period of, like you said, big label. We've got support. We've got back and we got all this stuff. Yeah. And now in the streaming age, it's 100% different of how you get your music out to people instantly, basically. Yeah, it, it, it's a trip because releasing a live as an EP, um, you release the song for people to just have. Then, then you release it for sale. Then you release the, the video. Then you release the whole package. After that, <laughs> that's and, not how it used to be. <laughs> no, no, it's like it's so completely like, like there's three sides of backwards. <laughs> you know? um, but yeah, you know, it's it's really interesting, and 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 the thing that's cool about it is it kind of does, uh, you know, it piques the interest, 
and then um, and then it kind of does this. It kind of keeps reigniting it, and then if people really like it, then cool, it's something, you know. And and that's that's kind of uh, with the EP. I feel like that's that's kind of a um, faster way to see how your your music's going to go. Like you know, we're actually you know, we're actually moving up the charts on, on, on Billboard's Top 100 with a, with a song for the first time in years. And, uh, and I feel like if we had released like a 12 to 14 song CD, it, it gets so lost, you know? Right. So uh, it's, it's, it's almost uh, the EP uh, where you mentioned it. And we'll, that's why we're talking about it. The new EP is Alive, Three Songs Alive, Set Me Free, King of the Mountain, King of the Mountain, my personal favorite, by the way. We'll get to that. But um, it it almost falls in line with this, uh, this the YouTube era is what I call it, or now it's the TikTok or the whatever it is. Everybody has shorter attention spans. And like you said, this is, I've consumed the whole thing. I've got three new songs from Dishwalla. And like you said, I either love it or I don't. And uh, it seems to be everybody's loving it, but that seems to kind of fall in line with consume this very fast, consume it, and let's keep moving forward. Right. Yeah. Um, have you been able, I know you've got a couple shows on the, um, on the docket, a couple shows coming up. Have you been able to play these songs live yet in front of crowds? The next show uh, is the first time we're going to play a live. Wow. How is that? How is uh, that feeling of new music in front of a crowd for the first time again? You know, I, uh, uh it's 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 different uh, every time because <laughs> well we've had songs that uh, are new songs that we play that people love right away and then we have these songs that are uh, uh, new ones that no one even knows and they love right away and then we have the ones that we're like oh oh yeah this is the one and then we play it and we're like oh well that kind of fell flat <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> both both with with the audience and for us as players you know so. You have to be careful because sometimes you think, and even even to be honest with you, County Wood Cars was kind of difficult to play live for the first, you know, couple of months until we found like a live pocket for it. You know, just what do you mean by that? Just uh, just a just a weird tempo in the set, or how? What do you mean? Well, like just like it's a uh, just a comfort with it, um, just because it is a kind of a weird herky jerky pocket. Right. Uh, that made sense while we were writing it and recording it. But then uh, when you go to play live, there's a, there's a different adrenaline and, you know, uh, you know, uh, different muscles that are brought to the instrument, you know, so <laughs> you kind of have to get used to that. I, you know, it's, it's interesting. I do um, among other things, radio as well, uh, rocket 95.1 rock station here in Huntsville, Alabama, but I also do uh, stand up comedy and, you touched on an interesting point because my, my biggest advice uh, when people say, hey, I'm thinking about getting into comedy, what can I do? My biggest advice is get on stage because a joke, it, it sounds like it's kind of like what you say about the live music. You, you don't know. There's no way to tell until it's performed live and you can right. instantly see that reaction. You yeah. can think this is the greatest joke I've ever written. And it goes on stage and it just shits the bed for lack of a better word. But right. that's interesting. You say the, the, you know, you, Hey, these are our favorite songs. This one's going to be a smash and you play it and people's like, yeah, oh, I mean, all right, but what's the next song? That's very interesting from that. I've always wondered about the, the, the musician on stage, especially you behind the drum set, how, you, how much you can analyze in the moment, how, what the crowd's doing. Oh yeah, you definitely like, like you can see and probably watch more of what's happening, and like you can definitely see the this is the let's go get a drink song. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> always that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so well, I, that's pre that's pretty amazing. The mindset of uh, you know one of the first musicians I've interviewed that that talked about hey, you never know until. You get out. The people are, I mean, they're the ultimate. You can think you've written the greatest record in the world, but, you know, and that might be good for you and your soul and your creative process, but until you perform it in front of the people and see how they live react, that's that's pretty interesting. So excited to see these three songs. Talk about uh, where these came from. I, I'll start with my favorite, King of the Mountain. 
Um, it's just a it's just a solid rock song to me. Um, how how good did it feel putting this together? Or how did it come about? Well, uh, uh, Justin's one of his dear friends was Carlin Dunn, who was the uh, Pikes Peak uh, Ducati racer, um, and he you know pretty much won all the time and was within yards of winning again and ended up, you know, losing his life on the, on the mountain in the race. And uh, it was a big shock to the racing community. It was a big shock to the Santa Barbara community. Um, and, um, and so, you know, that was, that was the inspiration for uh, the, the lyrics behind it. And then, uh, you know, because it was a racing song, there was this whole thing, it's got to, it's got to drive. It's yeah, gotta, it's just yeah. a steady. Doo -doo. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that has to be a, a well, you, again, you won't know until, you know, the next gig, but that seems like it's going to be a fun one to jam. You know, okay, even though I just said, sometimes you think, you know, what's going to go over, I think this one will go over. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, how sometimes those fast things just like, get a crowd going, you know. Well, in instantly when I heard it, it, and I say this in a good way, not that it's a copycat, but it, it's one of those songs where you go, man, it just has that familiar rock sound to it. And not like yeah. as in generic, but as in, man, that is, that's, that's what rock, the rock sound is all about. Just the, the, I mean, your drums are absolutely killer on that. I just, I just thought, man, what a, what a great driving rock song that is. Yeah. So, uh, and talk about Alive. That's the name. That's the, uh, you've got the first video out. Awesome. I'm talking about an incredible visual uh, video. Everybody can find that on YouTube. Look up Dishwalla Alive. But talk about this song and, and uh, what it means to you guys and how all this came about. And talk about this incredible video as well. Well, so the, 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 the lyrics have taken on so many meanings since the song was first kind of started. Um, uh, because there's just it's so there's so uh, like of the moment uh, with so many things with Ukraine with you know you know uh, it's a it's a very heavy thing and it was already heavy before all these other things happened. Was um, it a pandemic, baby? Is it right? Did you guys put this together in the pandemic? Or a little you bit know, coming. The whole project started pre-pandemic. In fact. Um, King of the Mountain, I think, finished recording in March. And I think didn't the lockdown happen March 20th or yeah, something? Yeah, right, right around there, yeah. Yeah, so um, so it was kind of it was kind of all pre-shutdown, but we had just gotten together because we were doing this project with um, Alan Parsons where he he invites uh, people to his studio to watch the production process. And then he, he invites a band that, you know, like us or Toad the Wet Sprocket or, you know, trying to think of who else. He's had a bunch of bands in there. Um, and so these people get to come and pay to have this experience of watching what it's like to engineer, you know, mic, you know, guitar amps and, you know, all this stuff. Um, and so we had gotten together to, to rehearse King of the Mountain. And anytime we're together, we work on whatever we can, right? And sometimes that might mean just pushing record and just playing, you know, jamming together and then going back and listening to it. Um, and that was partially what Alive was, was kind of just a jam with an idea that was brought in that we kind of developed, you know, by jamming. And, uh, and so we were all, you know, nose to the grindstone, pedal to the metal with this King of the Mountain thing. Uh, during the pandemic, this is, you know, fast forward to now we're like, let's put something out because, you know, um, and, uh, and so as we're finishing up King of the Mountain, everyone's listening to the, the other stuff we, we, that we uh, recorded. And it was like this, wow, that, that Alive thing's really good. You know, and uh, because it's, got, it's just such a huge, powerful thing. Like you were saying with King of the Mountain, it's, it's not like, you know, generic, but it's, it's rock and you know what it yeah. is. You know what's, happen what's yeah. gonna happen. With Alive, it's like this, whoa. You know, and, and the bridge just totally different songs, totally different songs. Yeah, it's totally different. So yeah, so it, it uh, yeah, it, it, pandemic 
you know, I, I would love to say we were all, you know, on the phone or sitting around, but I think for us, once we realized that you can't really in real time do stuff, the sending the files around to each other thing just isn't as fun. Like we kind of, we kind of like to make music in real time. That, that was going to be one of my next questions. I've asked all the musicians I've had on. Some of them thought, you know, everybody's different in the creative process. That's why I like to ask it, but that's interesting. You, do, you don't like it. Some people were like, hey, we found it. Hey, you know, we're sitting here and we got all the time in the world. But uh, for you guys, you guys wanting to put this together and create this new music together. Yeah. So, so basically nothing happened during pandemic. You guys just basically shut it down. Yeah, for the most part. No, yeah. So so then now it starts opening up. Now, was was this EP supposed to be released uh, during pandemic or what, or is it just now coming together? It, it just came out at no, the right time. Kind of just now. It's kind of like we could finally work again. Okay. Uh, let's put something out. We don't need to put out a full release um, because the, the last thing we were going to do is uh, 25th anniversary of Pet Your Friends and do vinyl as a release and that was going to be the big thing and then our label came to us and said you know we we think this this limited edition cd package thing with a t-shirt and blah 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 um uh that would be the way to kind of get something out there and get the, the you know your audience excited again and they were totally right because <clears throat> uh yeah it's it's uh it's really ignited a lot of interest again and and uh, like I said, we're on the radio again in a bunch of markets, you know, uh, and getting ads weekly. It's, you know, it's the first time I could say that in a long time. So that's it's like, like we said at the beginning, 30 years. That's pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's getting cool. ads 30 years apart is pretty crazy. Right. It really kind of is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So everybody can go to dishwalla.com. You can get all the links there, social media, a lot of the brand new EP. Three songs, like we mentioned, easily consumable. They're fantastic songs. I'm, I'm, I was ex super excited to hear it. And uh, But I wanted to get um, a couple things. We, we always got to get random questions in. Okay. Uh, anybody that listens to this knows uh, we, we end on random questions. But um, I thought I heard in a, another interview, I was con you know, looking up some other stuff. Uh, do, you, do you teach drums as well? I do. Um, I have a, I have a good, I, I saw you talk about that at a, um, a clip from, uh, the ACDC conference and, uh, okay. you, you were just talking about how exciting that was for you. I, one of my best friends is, is a guy named Matt Coon who does a, he's in Virginia and he does a, uh, uh, a school for kids teaching them music and they, you know, they, he has camps year round and, uh, but, and he's a musician and loves it when he gets to jam. Uh, but it was amazing. You guys almost. I've heard say the same exact thing. Music's great. Jamming's great. But teaching anybody uh, of any age, teaching them that music is, is a pretty cool feeling, you know, as a human, just oh, seeing yeah. them catch on. Talk about, yeah. talk about what, it, what you love about that. Um, you know, I, I don't think you know that you love something uh, as much as like on, on that kind of level, like as much as I love, like if you have a passion, right? Like, I, I don't know if you can know, especially in my case where I didn't necessarily want to have teaching be my passion. I wanted to be on the road drumming, you know, yeah. and making records every day. But then once I got into it and uh, and all of a sudden it was like, oh, wow, I, I think I like this. Like, this is almost as fulfilling as playing a really good show, you know. And, but you don't know that. Like, somebody could say that to you. Some old guy could walk up and be like, <laughs> you know, this is going to be just as fulfilling someday. And you'd be like, the hell are you talking about? Buddy, I just played in front of 10,000 people. That was pretty damn good. <laughs> right, right. That's pretty, that's why I wanted to be a rock star. That was pretty good, pretty much it. Right. But yeah, but then you have that, you know, whether it's a, a little kid, like I've got a six-year-old that should have her own TV show and because uh, she's so hilarious. But when she gets something, that's exciting. And then I have like a, you know, the, the tweens who are like, you know, they're super awkward, but then all of a sudden <laughs> drumming is the one thing they're good at. And so then that gives them their confidence. And then the teenagers who they're in jazz band now and, and, uh, you know, and I tell all of them, cause they always say, say to me, um, oh, there's a kid there that's a junior that, you know, they're going to give him all the parts cause he's been there forever. 
And I said, I, I'll tell them not if you're a better drummer. And they're like, no, that's not how it works. You know, it's, it's all seniority. Because, you know, politically correct stuff, which yeah. is great in a lot of ways. Um, they they want to make sure that the kid that's been there forever can play the songs. And I'm like, if you let that band director know that you're a badass drummer, you're going to get more charts. Oopsie. I'm losing my battery. Oopsie. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. And then, like, you know, now I have these kids that are in there like 20 somethings out touring and, you know, doing stuff with their own bands. So yeah, no, it's, it's, it's super fulfilling. I, I usually ask people, uh, one of the questions when we wrap up at the end is, is when you were younger, what did you want to be when you grew up? So that, I, were you always wanting to be the rock star? Or were, what was there? <laughs> was there a backup plan? It was really no backup. Plan. <laughs> <laughs> no, much to my mother's dismay. Uh, um, <laughs> My dad was fine with it, and uh, and uh, were they his, musical at all? Yeah, my dad was a great bass player, uh, okay. just fun, not you know, not you know, professional or anything, but uh, pretty much could play anything. But his whole his whole thing was bass, which as a drummer growing up to have your dad want to jam with you in the living room on bass was a great, right. you know. So yeah. So, and I always say, if you wasn't doing this, what would you do? But you've, you've gone into the teaching mode. So that like, you kind of, yeah. you kind of found that out. Yeah. Um, what new music are you listening to? What's some new, what's some new stuff that you dig right now? Man. Um, like, what does George Pendergrass gas listen to? What do you just normally listen to? Well, you know, it's funny because since I got, um, I got uh, a new car and it had that satellite radio. Okay. You can just put it on style. Yes. That's been Going great. Going 40s on 40? What are you doing? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, 90s on 90? You got to be tired of 90s on 90. A little tired of 90s. Although, <laughs> while I don't listen to the 90s station, um, I have been putting on, you know, like Smashing Pumpkins or... Um, I put on uh, the Cure Wish the other day, and nice. I put uh, Nine Inch Nails Downward Spiral. So I kind of did oh. go on, on a, that era, but not so much like play me anything from that era. Thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Uh, pizza toppings, perfect pizza. You only get four toppings though. Oh man, cheese doesn't count. That's the standard. Okay. You got sauce and cheese. Now you get you get up to four toppings. Well, I usually do uh, pepperoni and olive. Okay. But, uh, we also do uh, sausage and mushroom. So probably those four could go on one and be fine. Would you have to split? You got a, you got kids, right? Yeah. So would you have to do the half and half for the kids, or are you just mishmashing it? I got to get one with no cheese. <laughs> no cheese. Yeah, for the for the lactose or not lactose intolerant. She's actually dairy as uh, uh, allergic. And uh, oh, yeah, that's no. fine. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is the joys of being a parent. You're having to <laughs> adapt in pizza land. <laughs> Pizza's not even easy anymore for dad. Just to buy pizza, right? right. <laughs> dad, what's for dinner? Pizza. Now you've got work to do. You've got <laughs> rules with your pizza. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you gonna, are you going thin crust or thick crust? What do you like? What do you like? We're a thin crust family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A little, little crispy too. Well done. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fight it on the well done. Speaking <laughs> of kids, do you, do the kids know how cool you are? Are they a fan of the music? How's yeah, that been? They go back and forth. I'm gonna take in a little tour because I'm afraid my phone's gonna die. Okay. Um, so they kind of have to find out from their friends that their dad's band was cool or is cool, um, <laughs> which is kind of funny. And it's also funny to me which friends of theirs are actually into the band. Right. Um, but yeah, it's, it, you know, I, I think I think they think it's cool because they get to have, let's see, there I am. They get to have a bunch of instruments and a, you know, a studio to jam in and, a, you know, that kind of stuff. And, I think that the most recent thing that they got excited about was um, when Counting Blue Cars itself went gold. And then uh, 
now when now when a, uh, a single goes gold, they also add the, the streams, and there were seventy five million streams, mm-hmm. and so I think that that was the first time I think they were like, oh, whoa, you know. Yeah, selling records to them is nothing, but streams for the kids, yeah. that's what it's all about. Exactly. Have, have they got to see you live? They have. Yeah, they have. And they like that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, all right. So we got the new EP, man. And uh, hopefully we'll see like with the new EP. Does that mean possible tour dates or where, what are we flirting with for the end of the year? I know you got a couple still on the books, but yeah. what are we guys thinking? You know, it's it's uh, it's funny because it used to be you knew in November what your whole year was doing, but because of COVID and reschedules and uh, and things getting shut down, sure, and still, still happening. Yeah. You know, um, I think we've had what two? I think we've had two things, two things canceled because of COVID, and one where I had COVID and we had to hire a drummer to go out and play. Oh. Um, and so, yeah, no, so things are coming in, but the, the solid ones are the, um, the, um, Austin that's coming up and then, uh, you got a killer what, show in Vegas. Oh, that's the most awesome show. What that's a lineup a, that is. Yeah. yeah. 10,000 maniacs on the bill. Yeah. Uh, so you guys got some killer stuff. Hopefully, man, uh, I hope it opens up back up for you. Uh, much success on this live EP and, Hopefully that gets the ball rolling for the end of the year, like you said, tour dates. And uh, you guys are incredible position. 30 years for any band is is standing O, man. And like you, you said, to be putting out music and getting radio ads in this business in this day and age is absolutely incredible. Big fan. Wish you the best of luck, brother, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, George. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Click subscribe. Go to dishwalla.com. Uh, download all their stuff, consume all their stuff. Get the you got the vinyl for the kids? Not yet. We got to get the vinyl. I know. I heard there was. I actually am not just saying this as a joke. I heard there was a supply chain thing with the materials. Oh, I would. I would. That would not be surprising. Yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, isn't it crazy the kids are in the vinyl again? I Did love you it. Ever think that? <laughs> no, and I, I'm I'm glad I didn't throw my turntable away. And oh all my, yeah. Did you, you keep know? the old records? I kept all the records. I kept all my parents' records. So I've got you know, oh. fun. Yeah. Yeah. If you ever get to Huntsville, let's go crate digging. I, I got my collection. We'll have some good fun, man. Uh, okay. Look forward to seeing you out. Dishwalla.com. Everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Stay mashed. All right. Yeah.